Oh well, let's get started. Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is the first time here, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every single time that I post a video and I post every single week. As you can see from the title, today's video is going to be my full review with spoilers of Bones and All. This is based on the 2015 novel of the same name. I didn't knew that it was a book, so I didn't have time to read it before watching the film, meaning that this review is only going to be on the perspective of someone who watched the film and did not read the book. Now, as always, all my reviews are with spoilers. If you don't want them, just to see if this was worth it or not on the description box down below, there you're going to find my spoiler-free review because I'll give you guys the two options. So giving that little talk and disclaimer ahead, let's get into the video. Now, Bones and Ofollow, abandoned by her father, a young woman named Marion, embarks on a thousand miles odyssey throughout the back roads of America where she meets Lee. But despite her best efforts, all roads led back to the terrifying past and to a final stand that will determine whether their love can survive their otherness. Now, back in 2016, a French film called Raw was released and I got the chance to watch it actually on Netflix. That wasn't the time that this film was on Netflix. Now I think that it's only available on Amazon Prime Video. I am not sure. But basically this film is about a woman that goes to vet school. She's a vegetarian. And as part of the initiation of being a freshman at the school, she's forced to eat raw meat. I think that is specifically like a liver or something. After that, of course, she's a vegetarian. She feels repulsion but also she de develops this weird desire for flesh at first she thinks that it's just her raw meat but soon she's going to realize that of course it's a different kind of meat um that film is actually a very good one it's a recommendation that film it's graphic but elevates the cannibalism aspect like almost to an artistic point to the point that the film is actually kind of considered elevated horror probably you're familiar with the term but basically it's when films are more than just being killed and like actually good characters and this type of slow stillborns like examples can be h24 horror films like hereditary midsommar the witch those type of films are considered elevated horror and although raw of course is not h24 it's considered one of those and I saw that this film, Bones and All, was kind of similar in the aspect of elevating the cannibalism aspects. So I wouldn't say that Bones and All is 100% elevated horror, but definitely it's not just like B horror or just even commercial. That would be the word. Um, that's not the word that I'm looking for. Um, mainstream. It wouldn't be mainstream horror. That's that's the word. Now the film follows Marin. She lives with her father. They are the newbies to this new to this town, and she snucks out of her house to go to a sleepover. We are on the eighties, and she gets to the sleepover. She's with the girls. One of the girls it's laying next to her, and she shows her like her nail polish, and she takes the hand on the finger. She stucks it in her mouth and she swears like licking it and soon she bites and she basically takes off. Like you can see it, like the skin here, how it gets like removed and the bone. She ate the finger. They all start screaming. So of course she runs out, she gets to her house. Of course her father knows. I mean, she's covered in blood, so she knows what happened. And they leave and they get to another place. And when she wakes up on her 18th birthday, her father abandons her and he left her a tape explaining to her that this was something that was happening ever since she was a child. She hasn't done it much because, of course, he was the one in charge of preventing that from happening, but that also made them having to move very frequently because off every single time that she tried to eat someone so now she's on her own but on the birth certificate that he left her we don't see the father ever again you could be thinking maybe they will reencounter no we don't see him ever again he left her with her birth certificate and there it has the address of her mother that it's nowhere to be found because she abandoned him and the girl when she was a baby so now she's on this journey so that's where she's doing the road trip she's going to minnesota to go and find her mother 
Throughout the journey, she's going to encounter an older man that is an eater. That's why they are called eaters. They're going to eat our old woman that the old man, he didn't kill, but he was expecting her to die because she was laying on the floor for her to die so that they could eat it. They ate it together and she left the next morning. She went on a bus and she left. And then she meets Lee. Lee is more reckless when it comes to killing and eating people. But since she's alone and he now has a car that he stole from the guy that he ate when they met, they get to his house and they start a road trip. And he's like, yeah, why not? I will go there because he is has family. But since he knows what he is, he tries to be as far as he can because he don't want to put his sister in danger. And because of something that happened that we learned throughout the film that he ate his dad. He was an abusive person, so he deserved it. He deserved it. But he ate it to the bone. Because eventually they are going to find other eaters and they ask, have you ever ate someone to the bone? Like, you eat it completely. And that's the reason of the title, like bones and all. And at first, they're like, no, um, Marin hasn't done it much. Of course, she doesn't, but... Then we learned that Lee actually ate his father to the bone. And they eventually find the mother. And she's on a mental institution. She has no arms. And she also was an eater. And it's implied that this eater thing is more of genetics and hereditary also. So since the mother has it, now she has it. And on and on. And that's why there are many people. They found themselves because of the smell. They have... um more developed smell senses we could call it and they are able to find themselves but throughout the film we only learn that the only eaters are like not only on the country but at least on the film are her lee the older man from the beginning and the two more eaters that are the ones that are talking about to the bone and the mother those are all the only ones now since marion is so upset after seeing her mom she leaves lee alone and throughout all of this, of course, their friendship already escalated to be a romantic relationship. He, She leaves and he gets like freaked out because he doesn't know where she is. She encounters the older man. He has been following her ever since. He's a very creepy, creepy guy. He even has this long braid of hair of all the hair of his victims creepy as hell but it's important that's an important part of the film and his character his name is Sully but he's very weird eventually Marine finds Lee see each other again and they're living together when suddenly Sully reappears and Sully wants to kill Marine basically but of course Lee appears they have a fight um but on the braid it's the hair of Lee's sister. He ate Lee's sister. And it's not difficult to realize that because she's blonde and the last strand of hairs are blonde. So it's not easy. So it's not hard to make the correlation. And they kill him. But unfortunately, he stabbed Lee here. At first, I thought that was right here, like on the shoulder. But now it's more like here, almost on the lungs. So, of course, he is going to die. And it's a very heartbreaking scene because he's telling her, eat me to the bone, bones and all. And that he prefers to die that way. And I'm like, what? Something in my heart was going, just telling me that they weren't going to end together. But I didn't expect it to be like that. So the film ends with Marine eating Lee to the bone. And that's, that's kind of how it ends. Um, the things that I liked it was um, the story in general. I think that was very interesting. It's a slow pace and it's a slow burn. So for many, this can be boring and even tedious to watch. Um, my boyfriend wasn't having a good time. He felt very drained with the film. He does not like this type of horror. He went because he wanted to be my company on the film. But he didn't love it, the film, at all because this is not his type of horror. But the film, it's heavy. It's kind of heavy. But I did like it. The acting, it's it's good. Um, honestly, I don't feel that the film is perfect. Like, I don't have, like, really a thing that I dislike it, per se. But 
I don't feel like the film is also like the best one out there. I don't know if you feel me or if I am explaining myself correctly, but the thing is that for me, this is a four out of five and a eight out of ten. I think that the only thing is that it feels longer than it is. That would be the only thing that at some point feels like it's dragging itself. But taking that away, I think that the film is actually pretty good. Um, it's not for everyone, that's for sure. I don't feel like everyone is going to be able to enjoy this film because it's not for you. Maybe you don't like this type of horror. That's completely fine. That's completely fine. But just that will be the warning. This film is not for everyone. It's not as graphic as I was expecting. I was expecting more gore, but that's fine because the film does not rely on that. It relies more on the relationship between Lee and Marin and also her f trying to understand herself and this side of her that, of course, it's not well seen by society. I mean, that's, that's of course. And also the romance and relies more on the drama rather than just the gore, which it's completely fine. But being honest, like being fully honest, I can't say something that I dislike it, only the fact that it was a little bit slow. Although I don't like, like I don't dislike slow burns, but I feel like this one at moments it was just like way longer. And also the way that it cuts the scenes, like they will jump from one thing to another without a proper transition of scenes. And I was like, Oh, oh, okay, so we're jumping from here to there. Like, that would be the only thing. It didn't bother me that that would be the only thing that I would have made different. And maybe that would have made the watching the film maybe a little bit different and a little bit better. Besides that, I actually enjoyed the film. I would rewatch it, definitely. I would rewatch it. But I think that that's... Oh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you watched this film, what do you thought? Um, what other films about cannibalism have you seen? I have seen plenty, although I have a weird relationship with cannibalism. Um, I am not precisely the biggest fan, but I can watch them. But sometimes it's like too much for me. Like I said, I can't watch them, but sometimes it's too much for me. Like, for example, Run Turn, it's one of the first films about cannibalism that I ever saw. And also, of course, Cannibal Holocaust, but that was a nightmare and that wasn't a good experience. Honestly, don't waste your time if you're ever thinking of watching that. But, well, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you guys on my next video. Bye!